I am Nash B, and I'm young and great. How would I introduce myself to you? Um, I'm super producer, and I'm a real producer, not a beat maker. It's the difference, and uh, just I'm growing into a boss. You know what I'm saying? But my main thing right now is being a super producer. Nash B, Nash B Chilling. That's the brand. What a producer does to me is he breaks artists, not just somebody that makes a whole bunch of beats and go give it to who's hot. You know what I'm saying? He he can make an artist like. The artist may be working at a pizza shop, but he see a vision in them. He, he can give them a sound, you know what I'm saying? Not just going to get placements. That I feel like that's a beat maker, you know what I'm saying? But when you can take somebody from ground zero and bring them up, that's what a producer do. How was I introduced to the producing side? I, Cause I, I played a lot of instruments. I was at church, I played a lot of instruments and I wanted to learn how to record myself, but I didn't, I never had the equipment, so when I was in high school, I was in like the 10th grade, I had a football coach that was my world geography teacher. And he knew I played the instruments. So he will bring all the studio stuff to the school and let me mess around on his stuff like after school, you know what I'm saying? So I'd be making beats after school. That was my after school activity after football season. I'd like make beats on his, uh, on his setup. And that's how I got into it. And then eventually I just went and bought my own stuff. My experience working with the artists, I, I'm gonna start with Quee, cause Quee was me being a producer, like, cause like he, he was doing this thing or whatever, he, he had a fan base, but he didn't have a sound and a swag. And um, I remember when we did 19, that was my first time working with him. We both was 19. And me and Forte Boy, we got in the studio with him and we just really gave him a sound and a brand, you know, like a, a reason for people to listen to him you know, and not like compare him to nobody else because they would compare him a lot. So just to separate him, you know what I'm saying? So that was me being a producer and with Future, that was me more being a beat maker because I kind of just walked in the room and gave him like 10 beats. And then like 20 minutes later, he called me and uh, he played me, um, he played me a song he put on the Hendrix album. And I was like, man, this is hard, you know what I'm saying? And Bird, you know, that's like me seeing a boss you know what I'm saying? Seeing like him grabbing, he, he grabbed what we had started with Quee and he was like, I wanna magnify that, you know what I'm saying? Make it bigger. So that I saw Birdman as a boss and I, I asked him like for advice. You, got, you gotta be fearless, like, cause I seen him, I go to the studio all the time, like I be driving my busted Honda and he'll pull up in his Bentley, but I ain't never say nothing to him. Like I just say what's up to him, daff him over, keep it moving. But one day I was just like, man, fuck that shit. I'm finna go in here and this nigga finna get on these beats. And I walked in there, it was dark. And it was like 30 niggas with 30 guns. And he was standing over there and I could see him. I just walked up to him. I was like, hey, bro, I got these beats for you and you gonna like them. And he was like, man, load me up, man. And he played them and I left and he called me back in like 20, 30 minutes. He was like, he played me one of the songs. I was like, man, that's hard. You know what I'm saying? But I think it's just about being fearless like that, you know? Some people be, you know, what you call it, starstruck, trials and tribulations, just experiences, like going through it, doing big songs and being a part of albums and not getting paid. And I kind of had to look at myself in the mirror and be like, I couldn't blame nobody else. I'm like, wow, I'm not getting paid. It's something about me and my team that we not doing. So, you know, I just, I had to really step back. It was a time I stepped back and I wasn't making no music. I just focused on the business. I started to read up and know what royalties, publishing, mechanicals, masters, like learn the different sides of business. Like, cause if I'm in there making beats, but I ain't seeing the benefits from it, then it stopped making sense to me. You know what I'm saying? So I had to, really step back and get my team together and um you know just really focus on the business side a little bit more than just the creative side my i got a, i got two managers um shout out to red uh infrared that's my that's like my og manager walt he gave me the game he was like this is publishing this is royalties you know you get your contract you got to send it to your lawyer she gonna make sure your escalations and the royalty rate like he was teaching me all that and then I brought in uh, another piece of management built by Seven, uh, Leon Booker. Um, he taught me about masters and like administration, like going to get the money, you know what I'm saying? So 
I, I, I never was, I never say I was self-taught. It, it's a lot of people that don't been hands-on with me. And even like my big bro Smoke, like he, he owned his uh, company, Never Settle, but he taught me how to like get out here in the people face, like be in the clubs, you know what I'm saying? Go get your section and stand on that joint, you know what I'm saying? Let the people see you got to be out here and be seen, you feel me? Like, so... Nah, it's been a lot. It's been a long time. Cause I, all I at first all I knew was go to the studio. You know what I'm saying? Just okay, I'm gonna go to the studio and work hard every day. But that ain't that ain't gonna, that's only gonna get you so far. Still to this day, I don't really ask nobody to pay me. Like I'm not like man, you gotta pay me for this. You know what I'm saying? Like I see an artist and I see their potential. So I invest into their potential. Into I invest in the people. You know what I'm saying? So I don't too much. It's rare that I'm like, oh, I got these beats. It's two thousand dollars a beat, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really move like that. I could do that, but I just see the bigger picture as breaking the artist. You know what I'm saying? Put them on the label, break them. You know what I'm saying? Then the reward is way bigger than that. Whew! I can't. If you're just trying to ride the wave, I'm, I ain't. I'm not gonna work with you. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I work through passion. Like Jacquees taught me that. Like, like anybody, I like. Like, if I'm going to the car wash, I want him to be passionate about washing cars. Like, it's some people that's passionate about whatever they're doing, even if it's something small, if if it's cooking meals. It's like some people that just like to cook, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's where I want to eat at, you know what I'm saying? So I just find artists that's passionate about what they're doing. They may still have a job, but they still going home and recording every day, you know what I'm saying? Or they out here investing in shooting their own videos. It may look bad, but they still shooting. They still trying, you know what I'm saying? So I just, I rock with the passion side. If you got a passion for yourself, not trying to wait for somebody to do something for you that you're not going to do for yourself, then that's what I'm rocking with. Uh, how am I protecting myself? Um, creatively, I just, I really, I'm in my own zone creatively. Like, I don't pay attention to what nobody else really doing. Like, I, let, I really don't listen to no new music unless it's like, you know, a couple artists. I like Brent Fias, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, a couple new artists that give me that feeling that old music give me. But I be listening to, like, Brandy and them old albums. So I really be in my own zone creatively in business. I feel like the business is just getting great because with streaming, like, that shit is amazing. Like, these people play your song 10 times a day, you get paid every time they, they play it. I'm, I'm rocking with that compared to when they bought a CD. You know, they just play it all day, you know what I'm saying? But you ain't really getting them. But that streaming, I'm rocking with that. that that's the that's fire. The labels not wanting to pay producers. Um, I mean, you know, that is what it is. Like, I feel like nowadays they don't feel like a producer is as important you no know, more. Like back in the day, like you had Manny. You had uh, DJ Toon, uh, Rodney Jerkins, um, just all them big name people. Like, but I feel like they was doing it the right way. Like Dr. Dre, he did it the right way. He started his own label. Like when you start your own label and you get artists and you break them, they got to pay you. You know what I'm saying? But that be for them cats that just like going out here trying to just place the beats or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That, that That's like a beat maker problem, I feel like. But the labels definitely need to pay us because most of these songs wouldn't be fine if you play on instrumental. I mean, not instrumental, but acapella. Like, that shit would be horrible. Like, most people, you know, they fucking with the beat, and then they, you know, they fucking with the song, too. But that beat got to be right, though, you know, so. Absolutely. I, I already do. I got, um, <clears throat> absolutely, I got, um, I got Forever Quiz right now. He turning up, he doing this thing, he, um, it got him to a point where he doing shows every week now and he shooting videos, so he doing his thing. And then I'm working on another project with Pat Soul that we're gonna drop under my label also. So and I dropped a uh, project of my own under the label, but I wouldn't like I just took like like a compilation of songs of different artists that I rock with and I just put them on there and I'm gonna do that again. But I'm already owning the label. You know, I'm just trying to get it to that cash money or that bad boy or that aftermath status and then I find me a partner and then it'll get real colossal but you know we stepping into that now just trying to get them get the kinks out oh, how do I stand by the worth of my work um for one I don't I, I, it may just be the asshole in me but I don't owe nobody nothing because then if you ain't really help me get here I don't owe you nothing you know what I'm saying like 
for indie artists, like I said, like if you want to be turned up in this industry, man, you got to get out here and work for yourself. Ain't nobody finna do nothing for you. You know what I'm saying? Like anytime I was getting placements, anytime I ever got a placement, I've never got a placement by sending beats. You know what I'm saying? It's always me literally in front of the artist. And I'm like, hey, here you go. You know what I'm saying? But like anytime I'll ever ask anybody to send beats or do something for me like like that, like it don't nothing come back. So for indie artists, you gotta get out here and I don't care if you performing in front of five people. You need to be getting all five of them people to listen to your music. And with the labels, I don't I don't own no label, nothing. They, they every label I can think of right now, they if I if I don't work with you, you probably owe me some advice. What I give producers to producers, um, I think just most important is just DJ Spence told me just to just to make your sound, just to create your own sound. Don't try to be like nobody else. You know, don't try to make 808 Mafia beats. So don't try to sound like this producer or Metro Boom or whoever hot. Like create your own sound and get in your own lane, and you just. Make sure it manifests, you know what I'm saying? You manifest your lane, you feel me? Worry about your lane. Don't try to go jump in the lane all the way over here because you're going to get, you know, you're going to get caught up in the traffic. But if you go over here and create your own, you're going to stand out, you know what I'm saying? And just find your artist. That's the main thing. That's the thing that made, that helped me progress a lot faster. I found an artist like Jacquees. I found an artist and I rode with him. I remember when we was 18, 19. We was in Ronald Robbins, Georgia. He was doing like, that's when he was doing like little kid shows, like the grown women weren't even there yet. So he told me, he was like, bro, I'm gonna take you everywhere with me, everywhere I go. And like in two, I think 2016, we was on the road for six months, every state in America, and we went to Canada. So I think you, as a producer, you get with an artist, y'all build a sound, and it's just gonna grow. I feel like every big artist got a producer. So that's. Like, it, it can definitely change. It'll switch up on you, but just go with your gut feeling. I always, I had, I feel like I got a good gut feeling, so, you know, I I, I can feel energy, so. With, um, with bro, it was just like, man, this man, so, once again, he was so passionate about his stuff, like, he was so passionate about the music. It's like, like, on Sunday, I, like, if you watch football, like, the quarterback throw the ball to certain receivers. Some some receivers just gonna catch it and fall. They just want to catch. But I noticed with Jacquees, he was gonna catch the ball and go, go get some more yards. You know what I'm saying? That's what I liked about him. He was so passionate. All I had to do was just get in there. We make the best song. And he gonna go run and take it to Bird Man. And he gonna go run and do all that other stuff. So, you know, you just you just trust your gut, man. Get with somebody, and you know, if that do happen, just go get another one. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a million artists out here. What is my ultimate goal? Uh, my ultimate goal is just be the best person I can be. Like, and I wanna, I wanna do like certain stuff to change certain stuff. Like, not even in music, just in the world. Like, cause I got a little brother. You know what I'm saying? And like, I'm starting like living trust funds for him to be straight when he turned 18. So, I just wanna be to be the best person I can be and lead the people that's following me down the right direction. Cause I was led down some of the wrong roads, but you know, I just want people to be successful. I like making people millionaires or like just successful. Like seeing Jacquees when I met him, like nobody in the room had um, a diamond, like no earrings, not a chain or nothing. And now it's VVS, Rolly Wrist and Lambos and big houses. Like I like to see that. And like, I ain't, I don't have a Lambo or a big house. I'm, I'm comfortable, you know what I'm saying? Well, no, I'm not comfortable. I never get comfortable, but I'm straight with where I'm at. But you know what I'm saying? But I like seeing other people like go get the stuff they want that make them happy. Like I'd be like, yeah, man, you turned up, man. I remember when you had none of that, you know? So that would keep me going to see somebody else get, you know, the paper or whatever and they taking care of their family. My pops, like he taught me how to, I never seen that man not go to work. And when, like he built houses, so when the recession hit, it was bad for anybody that had something to do with housing. And I saw how bad it hurt him that he couldn't get up and go to work. Like pops was in there just sleep, he was sick. Like I saw my man's at his lowest, you know what I'm saying? It just hurt him that he couldn't go to work and be a boss. And he had to go get a job, but now he don't, you know, it don't, turn back up so now he building about three four houses a week but he always taught me to get up every day like we'll go to church on Sunday after church he'll leave and go 
like draw out the lines on the next foundation for Monday. Like he was just a monster. And even my granddad, like I think my granddad dropped out of school in like the seventh grade to go to work. You know what I'm saying? Took care of the family, but he was working. You know what I'm saying? And from my mom, and like even just any the ladies in my family, like my mom gave me like that confidence in myself. Like, cause I tell her I'm gonna be on TV, I'm gonna be doing like this music thing. And she know she was like, yeah, you can do it. Like, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? She never. Like, when I dropped out of college, she wasn't like, you need to go back to college. She was just like, go do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if that's what you want, just go do it. And she just always gave me that confidence in myself, like, the, I could do anything. You know what I'm saying? Don't let nobody tell you different. So, you know, that was my upbringing. I just want our black people to be stronger and educate ourselves a little bit more because we, we got a power. You know what I'm saying? We some of the most powerful people, you feel me? But we don't, we ain't woke up to that yet. You know, we kind of, we very sleep, but I just wish we would wake up and know our power, but, you know, we'll we'll see how that go. Y'all are the future. Like, y'all got so much time on your hands, man. If you got somebody older trying to tell you something, I think that you should listen to them. You know what I'm saying? Educate yourself in the best way that you can educate yourself. And just don't go for none of the bullshit, man. Like, it's a lot of temptations out there. Like, just focus on what matters. You know what I'm saying? And the, the, the girls, and if you're a dude, the girls that's throwing themselves at you, man, that shit don't matter. Get you a real woman, you feel me, that got some ambition. Same thing as a female. Get you a man that got you some ambition. Real king, because there's some kings out here. Just got to find them. But just stay focused, man, and be ambitious about something. Find you a goal and just something to chase, you know what I'm saying? Get you a career.